I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, subscribe, okay, and leave got a it. comment. <laughs> I'm setting up for Iron Horse 3, but this is also my primary Milsim setup. The most important things about my setup are going to be my eyes, ears, and hand protection, as well as my main weapon systems and uh, my plate carrier belt and helmet. I would say the minimum needed would be eyes, ears, gloves, at least two primary weapon systems, and a secondary weapon system. Your gear layout determines how fast you can get back into the fight and how effective you are in the fight. So if your gear is not ergonomic to your specific needs, then it's not going to be worth it. So I have my plate carrier right here. This is my Tigris 1 plate carrier, a multicam. Uh, on it, I have, or in it rather, I have some plastic dummy plates just to keep the rigidity. Um, on the front, I have my Haley Strategic D3CRM. It holds three mags, two pistols, and it has its own uh, admin pouch in the front. And it's connected with these swift clips here and Velcros to the front of the plate carrier. Uh, another good thing to look for would be good molly on the front, back, and cummerbund. Like, for example, I keep my radio on this uh, cummerbund. And I run all my wiring through the molly. So it's nice and lean. Uh, on the back, I have my Haley Strategic Flat Pack in here. I keep extra bags, ammo, uh, propane, stuff like that. And on my right side, <clears throat> I'm under the impression that my right side is my shooting side. So nothing else should be on that side besides my weapon. So this side is completely empty. Too much weight is when you are combat ineffective. If you are so heavy that you cannot run, jump, climb stairs, stuff like that, you're way too heavy. Communication. So on my flight carrier, I have a Beofang 8-watt high-powered radio with an extended battery. Here. It's dual-channeled and programmable, so I can talk to my squad and a command channel at the same time. With that, I run a cop mic is what I like to call it. It's just a simple little shoulder speaker. Um, and it's a uh, Kenwood. It runs through the molly up through my shoulder pad in here. Um, and I have a antenna relocation kit here. And it's just a coax cable that runs through and back up to the back of the plate carrier. So it's not constantly hitting me in the face. Because I like to keep my radio in the front where I can get to it super easily. That way if I ever have to change the channel or anything, I just pull it straight out and be done with it. So in a helmet, I have my TMC airframe replica. It's made of a nice hard plastic. It's really rigid. It has memory foam pads to keep it nice and comfy against my head. Uh, on there, I run my iPro through the back and keep it on the front. These are just simple I-Force protective glasses. Uh, starting from the front, I have my camera mount with an articulating arm so I can get it out of my face if I need to. Uh, moving to the left, I have a charging cord that goes to the camera and connects to a portable battery that I use to keep my camera charged. And here, I keep all of my other batteries such as CR123s, or double A's, triple A's, things like that. And then on the top, I have my red deadlight. Probably can't see that very well. A nice red deadlight for those low light situations so people won't shoot you when you're already dead. And it also has a strobe. So I personally use a headset. I use these Howard Late shooting headphones. Uh, they're the Impact Sports. I've been using these for several years. Uh, they're nice and durable. The battery lasts a long, long time. I've had these for three years and haven't changed the battery a single time. Uh, and the head 
breast is really thin, so it sits under. Wow, I'm already wearing a headset. So it sits under my helmet, no issues. Um, they also are noise dampening with this dial here. And if I wanted to, I could run an aux cord to them, but I don't because I have that shoulder mic. Uh, I prefer earmuffs because I hate, hate, hate getting shot in the ears. It's one of the most painful things. So my battle belt is a Condor battle belt. It's uh, pretty thin and very full, as you see. This is my primary system here. If I don't have my plate carrier, I have everything I could possibly need on this belt. So it's got molly that laser cut molly that runs all the way around with an inner and outer belt. So I guess starting from left to right, I have my dead rag here. A simple pull out, Velcro pull out. And it's there. And then I have a HSC tacos, double mag pouches with pistol and rifle. And then I have my Blue Force gear dump pouch. That's obviously where you're going to put all of your empty mags when you reload, right? So you don't lose them. And then here I had some, uh, some nice zip tie handcuffs, some mil sims. You know, you could LARP a little bit. Uh, last one I went to, we had to arrest cartel members. So these were nice for that. Here I have my full IFAC. That is any kind of medical, real life medical situation, I will have it covered with this. And going around, I have my pistol and a Safari Land holster. Got the Glock 17. Gen 4. And last but not least, I keep an extra pair of gloves on my belt at all times. You know, two pair of gloves in case you rip a hole in your first one. You don't want to grab anything that you don't need to be grabbing with your bare hands. You got them right here with some quick release belt. So I have two primary weapon systems. My first weapon system is going to be my GNP Walk Gas Blowback M4 rifle. Uh, it operates like a real steel AR-15, which I shoot a lot of. So it breaks down and everything exactly like an AR-15. Um, starting from tip to butt, got a Falcor, and this is empty, as you can see. Don't freak out. There's a Falcor flash hider for looks primarily. Airsoft guns don't actually need compensation. And then I have my Streamlight 2000 Lumen Flashlight. Uh, it's extremely bright. Thanks, cameraman. <laughs> and then with that, I have a toggle button and a push button to operate. Then I keep my wiring in check with some zip ties to the rail. And then I have my Brain Exploder run cam mount at the end. That's where I keep my scope cam. And then I have a hand stop here at the end for better ergonomics. Uh, I keep a two-point sling. That way, whenever I need free use of hands, I can tighten it, loosen it, keep it on my body whenever I need it. And then I have a Sig Sauer Romeo 5 optic. Uh, it's a real steel optic, so it, keep, it holds a zero very, very well. Uh, and then I have a lens protector here. That way I don't shoot this nice $250 optic lens out. Working down, obviously, Magpul handguard, Magpul buttstock, uh, adjustable as all things should be, well balanced. There you go. My secondary weapon system, second primary weapon system, is this Crytek Chris Vector. I got it not long ago. Uh, so I haven't really set anything up on it yet. Uh, but I'm definitely going to keep this foregrip and this suppressor. Uh, and most likely put a red dot sight on it. But uh, this thing's really cool. Man, I, uh, I just got it. And I can't wait to use it. And then my secondary is going to be my Glock 17. Uh, it is an Elite Force Glock 17. Come here, you. It's an Elite Force Glock 17. Really easy, got on e-bike. It's nothing special, but uh, it definitely gets the job done. Oh, 
Just do it, man. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Like and subscribe. And if there's any questions you have on anything you saw in this video, please leave a comment. And also, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Have a good one, guys.